As part of our Mind-Body Connection series, we're going to look at the cost of cynicism in causing others increased doubt, depression, anxiety, and more. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below and we'll get back to you personally. In addition, you can join my weekly group membership meetings, reserve your place in one of my seminars, or purchase any of my mind-body guides, also known as the PDFs, at www.crushingdoubt.org. Now without further ado, here is my episode on the cost of cynicism. The world can be a very tough place, particularly when you've experienced some sort of trauma as, I would say, virtually everyone has in some respects. But whatever your level of trauma, there are things you can do in the scope of your own life to help. That being said, this episode isn't actually about what you can do in your own life so much as what we can do in the lives of each other. It's also about what society can do for you to make your individual journey better. I have often been guided by the statement, be the change you want to see in the world. Well, part of the change I want to see in the world is to see less cynicism, and even when it is there, more doing something about it to make things better, which I suppose is a very non-cynical viewpoint about cynical thoughts. Yes, you're allowed to be cynical, but do something about it, and recognize that there is a cost to others. This is the crux of this episode, in fact, recognizing that cynicism has an actual cost. We tend to think of ourselves as free to be however we want, considering we often cannot do what we want. But one thing I want to get everyone to consider is how being cynical doesn't happen in a vacuum, and it is not an action without consequences for people around you. What I am suggesting here is that we look at cynicism cynically, instead of just taking it at its word, because I think that cynicism is actually a defense against what we really wish for, hope. This is why when we dig ourselves into cynicism, we may cause some real trouble. We are sending out a message to others that this stance is somehow valued when it is in fact contrary to what we ourselves even want to believe. Now how does this relate to the mind-body condition? Well, very few things can breed doubt like cynicism. Just think about it. If you think that other people are not to be trusted, or that there is no point to whatever it is someone is trying to achieve, or what they are trying to achieve is for a jaded purpose, you are adding to doubt. While it is true that many people aren't to be trusted in certain respects until they've earned it, if this is your general stance, and worse, if it has become a core value, you have now become a source of doubt for others in this stance, and while you are entitled to do that, it is not fair or accurate to suggest that you can do so at no cost. Of course, I'm saying you as if you, the listener, is the cynic in this role, but the reality is that most of my viewers are more likely to be a cynic towards themselves, but have suffered at the hands of other cynics more frequently. In fact, in the course of recovery, one of the reasons I had to stop listening to other people is that there was so much cynicism out there that I did not know who to trust, and each time I felt I had hit on even a partial solution, the cynics would come crashing down on my parade. The cynics even had an agenda to establish that things couldn't make sense and that everything was bad. This was not helpful and bred confusion on top of it all, which is another form of doubt as we know. In some ways, the one assumption of my system is a very non-cynical one. You make sense and your symptoms make sense. What kind of cynic would believe this? Well, a logical cynic can at least be convinced, but there may be a lot of collateral damage as we work towards it. The point being, cynicism tends to get us away from science and logic, despite its reputation for being discerning. I would say that both science and logic are very hopeful endeavors, full of clarity and free from cynical viewpoints. In fact, both are free from viewpoints altogether, which is part of what is so nice about them. There is an objective truth. I've talked in my seminars about the dangers of postmodernism, the philosophical theory that claims that everything is subjective. Cynicism is a close relative of postmodernism because it is a very cynical viewpoint indeed that would claim that just because things can be subjective, there is no objectivity. I bring this topic to you because, to get better from mind-body issues, you're going to need hope. Along the way in the columns, you're also going to need many ways to combat doubt. So I'm giving you another. We need to recognize that cynicism is an insidious form of doubt. It is essentially a regularly endorsed form of doubt in society, and increasingly so. I grew up in the 80s, and while there were some things that were far worse than today, they were a time with a lot less cynicism than now. I remember when certain moments turned us towards cynicism. 
Nirvana, much as I love them, were not a happy, upbeat bunch thinking that things were going to work out. Hip-hop culture quickly went from cutting-edge fun and good feeling to all dark, all anger, all the time. Hannibal Lecter was the first completely glorified villain I can remember. Before that, we could revel in them, but we didn't generally want them to get away. Now, Breaking Bad, as great a show as it was, is continuing that tradition. It is all the rage to venerate darkness. In many ways, our society has been getting darker and darker. Social media has only made that worse, with the ability to unleash sarcasm and a pithy quip on anyone at any time. Cynicism is doubt hidden under the veil of self-satisfaction with our own intellectual prowess. But there is a cost to it all, and I want everyone to think about that because it can do major damage. To recover from trauma, we need a sense of safety. Cynicism provides exactly the opposite, all for the cheap thrill of false superiority. I am all for critical thinking, but cynicism has an endgame of being negative and destructive. Given the general population that follows me tends to be more hopeful and not wants to tear down other people, try to think about it in terms of recognizing this danger from others. We need to see it in action to prevent ourselves from falling prey to it. Recognize a cynic does not automatically know better just because they are representing themselves as seeing more than you by seeing a more jaded viewpoint. Quite the opposite. They are so locked into a motivation to see things a certain way that they are more likely to see things inaccurately, despite the cynical belief that they're seeing things more accurately simply because they're letting in the negative more than most. Letting in the negative doesn't mean it's more accurate. This is one of the main things that lets doubt in the door, overvaluing negative thinking and mistaking it for accuracy. From a column's perspective, cynics want to assert control over other people by claiming to have taken a higher level view. But it is, in fact, the opposite. True power comes from knowing who you are and what you need with a complete lack of cynicism. Sincerity is the pathway to healing. Cynicism only tears it down and brings doubt to everyone around us. That is quite a cost when you think about it. Sincerity aligns with our true selves and leads to living in the power column. Cynicism does the opposite, walling you off from power and is a part of the structure of doubt to pull you back from power. So protect yourself from this insidious form of doubt, either as it comes up in you, or as it is way overvalued in society, or as it is brought to you by individuals who want to keep others from becoming powerful. Do this, and you'll have one more weapon against doubt at your disposal. I really hope you enjoyed this episode on cynicism as a form of doubt. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we'll get back to you personally.